Morning guys. Um, right, just down the farm this morning, just doing some uh, temperature checks. Quite interested to see how, um, oh, I'm not sure how this wind's gonna be, I might have to get my microphone on. Um, just interested to see how uh, the difference is in, uh, in all of the lakes here on the farm. You know, they're all fed by basically the same water course, but the difference in temperature is, is literally quite staggering. And obviously that has a massive bearing on, on how quickly these fish start eating, start processing that food and start putting on weight. So I'm just going to go around. I use a, um, I've got multiple different DO2 sensors, but I've got a, a cheap Chinese one that has a temperature on, and I, although the uh, dissolved oxygen reading is not correct, the temperature reading is. So I use that around, and I'll just show you what we're getting because it's quite interesting. Okay, 9.6 degrees down here, a foot below the surface in the top lake. That is on the. That's basically on the wind as well. So I'll go up to the top end and we'll test oh, that. Quite interesting, this is in the tank. Now against the concrete here in the tank, I thought we'd have warmer temps, but nine degrees, so 0.6 of a degree colder than the top lake. Okay, so now we're up the top end of the main lake, 8.3. So we're a fair bit, fair bit cooler up here. Obviously we've had a colder night, it's been going down to two degrees. This very, very shallow water up here um, has been affected by that. What I think it's showing as well is that the uh, temperature of the water down there off the dam wall, uh, the, the top layers are getting really mingled now with this wind. And uh, overall, it's really creating a, a, you know, a really nice warm area of water down there, nearly a degree or over a degree warmer than it is up in these, what you would imagine, shallows. Now, if we tested this later on in the day, I'm sure that this would obviously have, have caught up and would be warm, especially on the lee of this wind. But we'll go and check the other lakes and see how they're all going. Okay, so this is up in the top corner of the Leany Pond. A lot, this is where a lot of the fish have been spending their time. Oh, and funny enough, it's 10.1 degrees. So there's no surprise there, is there? This gets early morning sun. It is shallow and it's heated up really nicely. Hence all the fish want to be in here. Um, water temperature, such an important part to play. You know, I'm looking at it from a fish farming perspective, but you know, as an angler, you really want to be thinking about it, especially as this, uh, in the spring um, as the water starts warming up. Okay, this is dropped into the top lake now, near the outflow. And this is the problem, see? Look at this, straight away, down to 8.3 and still dropping. So compared to the main lake, again, well over a, well over a degree cooler um, at the outlets and nearly two degrees colder than the shallow area in the Leany Pond. I'll go and check the top end now and see what that's like. Right, so interesting findings, as they always are. Um, I'm, in the, I'm in the transit today, so uh, it's nice and dry, so I was able to bring that and I brought some feed up. Um, always fascinating looking at, um, looking at water temperatures um, across what are basically, you know, three lakes here, all fed by basically the same water course, um, but the difference in sizes, depths, you know, so surface area and depths, and the amount of available sunlight makes such a humongous difference to the um, to the nature and the, uh, of each lake, and obviously to the the temperatures that they can get, you know, more more quickly. So the bottom lake was at sort of nine point six, I think nine point four to nine point six. Um, that was right on the wind side. That was on the on the you know on the on the main shore, getting belted by this new southerly that's coming in. That's make, making making all of that water that, that that's across the whole lake mix up. So that's a really true representation of the of the of the water temperature there at this moment in time. Um, up in the top end, it was a little bit cooler. The, the overnight, without it getting any sun on it this morning, overnight um, being cold, about two degrees, um, the water temperature in that shallow water had obviously dropped. But quite an interesting uh, difference between them. But you know, encouraging that that's, you know, just on nearly 10 degrees down on the bottom. And I'd say by the end of today, it's going to be. Um, we've got 17 degrees today and this warmer southerly. So that's really nice. The Leany Pond. Um, now, the Leany Pond was 10.1 degrees up in this shallow um, lee corner. Um, what's getting the sun. And that's where the fish have always been sitting whenever I've come up. So there's no, you know, that's, that's the obvious reason for that. Um, over by the outlet, um, I think it was about 8.89 degrees. So um, again, a smaller surface area and it's relatively shallow. So it's going to heat pretty quickly, especially now I've got rid of all the trees around it. 
the top lake is obviously the lake which is which I've, I've had the most issues with and i've talked about it yesterday on the video we're getting rid of a lot of the trees around it so it can get more sunlight um i've shallowed that top end and i've still got more work to do as it dries off a bit more this summer to dig that top sort of quarter of an acre out so that i've got a shallower bigger shallower area that can heat more bit more quickly um and um but it's a it's a smaller surface area it gets less sunlight and it's deeper um and it was the coldest what 8.4 degrees um you know over a degree colder than the main lake and that's significant uh is really significant so interesting from a from a farming perspective and and how i'm going to manage that and try and get a greater productivity up in that top lake again the flip side to that could be that you know during the winter that spring water coming in is going to keep at a more constant temperature so you might get that little bit more continual feeding through the winter period because the water temperature won't go as low. Um, but you're not getting great, great growth rates there. You know, the, the ectothermic nature of, of fish, their enzymes are not working efficiently there. So you're not really getting a great conversion from your feed. So we get a little bit of growth there, but not massive. You know, with regards to fishing, of course, at this time of year, this is the key moment. You've got to be trying to work out where those warmer thermocline layers or warmer areas are within the water column. And that's why zigs can be so effective at this time of year, coming out of winter into spring. You know, the fish are seeking out that warmer water. They're seeking out kickstarting their, metabolic, their, their metabolism and getting, you know, getting going. So they're looking for that slightly warmer water and the opportunity to, to, to kickstart their year as quickly as possible. All right, so that's it for today. I'm going to fill feeders. Um, I've measured out for the Nico span now over on the riverbank, so I can do. I can order that in. That will be coming later this month. Be a big job to do putting the whole Nico span edging along and securing that riverbank for future years. Um, that's that's all been measured, ready to rock and roll. Um, gear will be ordered in to do that. Um, got the net coming for this, which will again come the end of this month. Although I haven't seen any uh, predatory creatures up here, so that's bloody marvellous. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's it for today. I'm going to go and have a little look up my barrage and see what the water levels are like. I might try and get a fish early next week when uh, when I've got no anglers on Fensmere. All right, catch you later, guys. Bye-bye. So, you want to have a go at barrage fishing. This is it. You've got to try and set up on that. And you've got to fish amongst this. It certainly isn't for the faint-hearted, that's for sure. Brutal. In every shape, sense and form. Hence, 100 pound braid and total carnage gear. Um, another new uh, chapter is just about to begin while this water's low. So I'm really looking forward to this little, uh, little, little, uh, little challenge. Um, fished down here before years ago um, but it's been six years since I last did so um, it's going to be interesting see what happens eh <laughs> gotta love it don't you carnage in the barnage